Hello YouTube. Copwatch White here again with another court commentary. This one's a little bit different. It is a church court, a religious court, and one that I have been looking forward to seeing for 20 plus years. <laughs> because it's a Mormon court and, you know, all of us have unique circumstances that bring about our existence, our birth. And one of, one of the links in the chain of events that led to me was Joseph Smith, Mormonism, straight up, right? My parents were chilling in San Diego area, property, ha horses, nice house, acres, good times. Missionaries show up and say, ha, ah, we've got cool stuff you should listen to about forever and families and normalcy and we're happy and you can live with everybody forever and they promise the world and of course they only have to deliver after you die but they want 10% of your paycheck now and on and on and on. Authority, 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 right? So, of course my mom was like, yeah, sure, no problem. My dad comes around eventually. And they decide to sell all that, move to Utah to live in uh, more, uh, almost poverty. <laughs> after they spit out three more kids. So three more kids in California, then we bounced to Utah. And I was the first of those three. And that means that you're raised from the day you were born to you know go to Mormon churches and uh, all that sort of thing. So I was never a kid who believed it at any point. It was always forcing me to go and I hated it the whole way through. And uh, that was my very first battle with authority, uh, really that and the fact that I had, you know, two parents who had no business being parents, who were completely unprepared to be parents, who were not qualified to be parents, just woefully inadequate, and uh, they were my slave owners. I mean, not the chains and whippings kind, but I was most definitely their property. I had to go where they wanted me to go, when they told me to go there, despite me saying I do not want to do this my whole life long. They were free to hit me with a belt or God knows what and that's just the way it was. So I'm not complaining. Overall it wasn't such a horrible childhood. I have all kinds of uh, probably more better memories than bad ones but the Mormon church really did a number on my family and I'm not uh, bitter about it but I don't forgive and I don't forget and um, this court hearing in the church was just released by someone, a guy named Jeremy Runnels, who compiled a bunch of information that, that essentially, through evidence, proves that the church is full of lies, was never legitimate, and is just a made-up organization from people back in the early 1800s and some hustler, swindler, um, con man, who you gotta respect, man. <laughs> Don't hate the player, hate the game, right? He got all kinds of women, all kinds of money, all kinds of power, because he could manipulate other people. And he was doing it fraudulently. And the scope of the unnecessary suffering that this has caused to generations of people, mainly in Utah, but obviously they spread out, is one of many stories throughout history of bullshit authority trying to take control of people, right? You'll hear some very similar themes between this church court and government courts and I'm pointing to the fact that authority is authority, it's all run by the same template of lies, manipulations. It just, it just you know, you look back on your life and you see the effects of authority upon it and it, 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 it it's really something else. So, without any more delays and rants, this guy compiled again a lot of information that evidence that just is damning. It's just absolutely damning. And because he took it public, they are punishing him and wanting to excommunicate him. It's usually for like murders and child rapists and, you know, very violent people do all kinds of very, very bad things. So. That's where it starts. It's kind of a hostile opening, and he's kind of knows these people, and the, 
it's just a court. It's a different kind of court. So here's my court commentary of the LDS Church, and thank God for the courage of Jeremy Runnels. Here we go. Can you slide your chair back? I need to be able to hear you back. We'll have an interpreter right here. I know, but I want to be able to hear as well. Thank you. <laughs> he says he needs to be able to hear better because Jeremy has a hearing disability. He's uh, legally deaf. And um, I'm not sure on the specifics of his disability, but as you can tell, he obviously can communicate fine. He brought an interpreter. They denied that person to be able in, in the room because obviously they want this thing a super secret. And uh, the format is they get to talk, and then he gets 45 minutes to talk, and you'll see how that goes down. Oh, also, I um, edited up the original release to just the highlights. So that's all you're seeing. Okay. Brother, well, this is Jeremy Runnels from the 30th Ward, and we're here to hold the disciplinary council on his behalf. Now, do you see why this is so exciting? This guy... <laughs> this is so awesome. He filmed his excommunication hearing, or his disciplinary council, as they call it. A bunch of middle-aged to older white men who have most of them been in the religion since the day they were born, and they know no, nothing different. It's just comply, 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 and the Mormon church is self-destructing. Membership rates are plummeting. Uh, tithing money is plummeting. They're terrified, and they're just making mistake after mistake after mistake while they're... Leadership dies one by one. Here's a prayer. Our dear Father in heaven, so grateful for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're grateful for the opportunity to participate in the proceedings this day. We ask that this day may be upon us. And that we might know thy will concerning all things. And that this might be a pleasing unto thee, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Ugh, that gives me the creeps hearing that because it's so familiar. Prayers like that. So obviously he filmed it. They don't know he filmed it. He filmed it, and he put it on YouTube through some format or somebody. And now I'm sure the Mormon church is just reeling in embarrassment because they just got woken up to the fact that these judges are getting woken up to that you cannot keep cameras out of your interactions with the public. You're fraud. You can't find it. You can't prevent it. No matter how thick or how high you build that wall, it is going to get crossed. Period. And the Mormon Church just found this out. Here we go. Very much. Okay. We've had an open prayer. Um, Jeremy, we we've, we've, have convened tonight in this formal disciplinary council on your behalf. The result of which includes the possibility of no action, formal probation, disfellowshipment, or excommunication. We start right off with the threats. The reason for this council is that you are reported to be in apostasy and that you have repeatedly acted in clear, open, and deliberate public opposition to the church or its leaders. Pay attention to the charge. Public opposition. It's about going public. You have, among other things, published materials and participated in interviews which have attempted to discredit the church, publicly express your view that the church's scriptures are fraudulent, and express opposition to church leaders, including the prophet Joseph Smith. Again, it's about going public. They don't mind if you think, you know, dissent, as long as you keep it to yourself. The definition of apostasy as defined in the handbook is repeatedly act in clear, open, deliberate public opposition to the church or its leaders. Can, My, you, pin, can you finish the rest of the apostasy definition? I'm going to speak what I want to speak. Okay, okay. Thank you. How rude. <laughs> I'm going to speak what I want to speak. I'm sure that's how Jesus would have handled it. <laughs> Jeremy, do you admit or deny your participation in this conduct? I deny it. Okay. I deny it in the context of how you frame it. Okay. I'll take up the 15 minutes of stated letter that I sent you to present the evidence which supports those things expressed previously. After my 15 minutes, you'll be given 45 minutes to make your statement. Do you understand that? I do. Okay. As members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and He is the head of the Church. Mm -hmm. Restored through the prophet Joseph Smith, mm -hmm. that He did see God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that He brought forth the Book of Mormon by the power of God, and has been led by a continuous prophet since then with continued continue revelation. Mm -hmm. 
As part of your public, deliberate, open opposition to the church, you have published an 84-page document on a public internet site expressing opposition to core church doctrine, which you claim has been downloaded and shared over 100,000 times. Woo-hoo. This document is being translated into multiple languages. Damn right. You are soliciting donations for its ongoing distribution and development. You have done multiple online recorded interviews broadcasting your views in opposition Thank God. of church doctrine and its leaders. Amen. There is indication from your public website and also in online public forums that you are openly and deliberately in public opposition to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You are doing this by deliberately and openly mocking and ridiculing God as a psychopathic... Uh, an, an imaginary, fictional entity. Schizophrenic, thank you. Page 70 of your online document. This um, president may have some kind of a reading disability, and he just has a problem with the word schizophrenic. No biggie. Sorry, these things are hard to read. 